know you've had those same kind of women as well. For those, I also reach out to the Lord in thanksgiving for all those who took the time out to share a little bit of love, a little bit of God's love with me. So yes, the world is looking for something concrete, some concrete demonstrations of the love of Jesus Christ and Christian love. We want to see love in action, not just the words only, but love in action as well. So we are celebrating Mother's Day, and we're emphasizing the love of a mother and how that love can be expressed in three different ways, in words, attitudes, and actions. That is precisely what our scripture today from Mark chapter 7 demonstrates, as his Greek mother comes to Jesus for help. When tested by Jesus, she responds with grace and grit, with charm and insight. Jesus was impressed. If you look at the text, he was impressed. He had indeed made her well. Now, this is a fascinating story. At the point, we can go into a number of different directions with this story because it's got hold of so much information that you and I as a Christian can live on and thrive on. So let me invite you to look at with me at the portrait of love that is painted in this particular text out of Mark chapter 7. In this Greek mother's encounter with Jesus, we see three of the most important ways to express love. Well, first, love can be expressed with words. And words are very important. Because they need to come from your mouth, not from your head, but from your heart. The Greek woman came to Jesus that day to express in words her love for her very sick child. It seems like it would be so easy to express our love with words, doesn't it? But you look around the world today, not everybody has the ability to express love verbally with one another. But the truth is, very few people, I think, do that very well of expressing their love. Why is that? Why do we have trouble speaking the words of love? If we only realized how powerful our words were, I think we could work harder at this task of, exp of expressing love to one another in our daily life in the future. Because look at how powerful your words are. Look at how powerful words are in today's society. And there are certain catch words that we got our attention. Why is it Jesus' love that gets our attention? Some years ago, there was a woman who was dying in a local hospital. She was in her mid-80s. Her son walked over to the bedside of his dying mother. He leaned over and kissed her on the cheek, and he was touched by the very tender moment of seeing her so weak, so vulnerable, and dying, that he said to her, Mom, you have been a great mother to me, and I want you to know that I love you. And through the tears, his mother said, Son, you are 63 years old, and that is the first time that you told me that I love you. That's the first time she heard her son say, I love you, Mom. So I have to ask you this question, which is typical on Mother's Day, I would think. Is there a word of love that you need to speak to somebody that you know today? Don't make it. You won't regret it. Don't put it off. Express Christ's love through you to someone else and your emotional love as well to, your, to someone else. Some of you may be still fortunate enough to have your parents alive. If you have parents or family that are alive like that, express your love to them. Don't put it off. What that phrase, don't put it off tomorrow, what you can do today. How long has it been since you've shown an expression of love to someone that's important to you? The bottom line is that we need to express love. We can use such words as I love you, I care about you, you're very important, but just how you say it that's very important. There's no question about it, one of the ways to express love is with words. And secondly, we can express our love with our attitude toward life. Now I put words first because that word expresses how you feel about things, whatever, and those words also help you with your attitude towards life. One of, the things, one of the things about the Greek woman in our text that impressed Jesus was her attitude. She was committed to her child, and she was willing to do whatever it took to get help for her very sick daughter. She was bold. She was determined, persistent, and courageous because she lived that attitude of love. She would not be put off. She would not be discouraged. 
She would not give up because she lived by the attitude of love. Some years ago, in a mining town in West Virginia, there was a 17-year-old boy who took a mining job in the coal mines during the summer. And being a coal miner for the summer sounded great. He was excited. A new adventure. Something new to do. However, the second week on his job, he got lost down deep in the mines. He had been working with a group of veteran miners who had always warned him, do not leave the group. Stay with the group of miners and you will always be safe. They told him that it, to stay with the code because it's so easy to get lost. There are so many different le- rooms and cabinets and combs and everything you go in. So many ways that you could very easily get lost. And there were treacherous passageways in the mine as well. But he's 17 years old. And one day, absentmindedly, he wandered away from the work team and he became lost. Completely lost. And soon the life that he had faded and went out. He yelled, he cried, he screamed. No one could hear him. He was terrified. He thought he was going to die. He didn't know which way to go. So he dropped down on his knees and prayed to the Lord that said, Save me, Lord, for I'm having a hard time. I need to find my way out. Help me, dear Lord. Then he noticed something. And when he knelt down to kneel to pray to God, his right knee hit something hard. And what he hit was the track of the track, track of the railroad track there that they used to bring coal in and out. And he realized that if he kept his hand on that track, and if he followed that track, it would lead him out. And that's what he did. He held on to the track, he followed the track, and eventually it brought him out of the dark, out of the depths of the mind, to life and safety. There's a message for you and for me in our own daily life. If we hold on to the track of God's love, and we hold on to that very tight, and we follow it every step of the way, just reaching out and touching it, following it wherever it leads, how much better will our lives be if we were led by the love of Jesus Christ. If we make God's love our attitude in life, no matter how dark some moments may get in our lives, the love track will bring us out and lead us to the light. As the old cliche goes, and it may sound as a cliche, but it's really profoundly true, God's love is the answer So we would do well to hold on to that track of love with our hands and live by that attitude. As Christians, that is our calling. As a follower of Jesus Christ, a resurrected Savior, that is our calling. To follow in His steps, to follow His love, to follow the example of love that He gives. We can express our love to one another with words as well as with attitude. And finally, we can express our love to one another with actions. The Greek mother in Mark 7 put her love to work. She acted it out. She expressed her love with actions. How important actions are, you know as well as I do, that if someone says, I love you, but doesn't follow with actions, how important, how does that word, what do those words actually mean, I guess is what I'm saying. Some years ago, there was a girl in China her name was Annie Wong. She was in high school, and Annie one time went with, the, with, the, to, with her summer friends to a youth program led by a Methodist College student. That night she was converted to Christianity. She accepted Christ as her Savior and dedicated her life to Him. But she had a problem. How was she going to tell her parents that she left the faith of her parents and started following Jesus? Quite a dilemma, if you think about what she went through. So she made a very bold decision. She decided not to tell them in words, but rather to show them in deeds of love. Here's how she described what happened. Before Christ came into my life, I was spoiled and selfish. I was irritable and impatient. I was disrespectful to my parents. My room was a mess, and my attitude was even worse. But after Christ came into my life, I changed. 
I was kind to my parents. I cleaned my room. I helped with the housework. I spoke with tenderness and respect to my parents. I was loving toward everyone. My parents noticed this, and they said to me, Annie, you're different. Why? What has happened to you to make you so different? Then she said to them with a big bowl of courage, that yes, I'm different because I've accepted Christ as my Savior. I am a Christian now, and Christians always live by the law of love. Her parents said to her, tell me more of this religion you're talking about. Tell us more about this Christ. If he could change people like that, we want to be Christians too. Don't ever underestimate how much your actions are seen and how people feed off of those actions in their own lives. By how you act, the attitude you have, and the love you have, that's three things that show that you love the Lord because you have to be consistent. In my opinion, if you love the Lord here, then your attitude will be different and then your actions are going to follow you. You can't have one without the other two. It's the trifecta of Christianity, you might say. Three things that we want to hold on to. And on Mother's Day, there's no better time to think about these things in regard to your mother. And more than likely, your mothers have been that in their own way to you. But always realize how much your actions mean. That people are watching you. They are observing you. And that is really a big deal in this day and time. So you can express your love with words, attitude, and most powerfully, I think, and most dramatically, with actions. Hopefully you can see that in the people around you in this church and see that an example of what your mother was to you or is still to you.